Hello, today our topic of discussion is calorimetry, flame photometry and atomic absorption spectroscopy. In this topic we will cover theory, instrumentation and application of calorimetry, flame photometry and atomic absorption spectroscopy. Calorimetry It is the most common analytical technique used in a biochemical estimation in a clinical laboratory. It involves the quantitative estimation of color. Theory The colored solution have a property of absorbing certain wavelength of a light when a monochromatic light is passed through them. The amount of light absorbed or transmitted by the colored solution is in accordance with the two laws. First one Beer's law, second one Lambert's law. Beer's law When a monochromatic light passes through a colored solution, the amount of light transmitted decreases exponentially with increases in concentration of colored substance. That is, the amount of light absorbed by the colored solution is directly proportional to the concentration of substance in a colored solution. Lambert's Law The amount of light transmitted decreases exponentially with increases in a path length that is diameter of a cuvette or a thickness of a colored solution through which the light passes that is the amount of light absorbed by the colored solution depends on a path length of a cuvette or thickness or depth of a colored solution. Combined Beer's and Lambert's Law it is expressed as the amount of light transmitted through a colored solution decreases exponentially with increases in concentration of colored solution and increases in concentration of a colored solution and increases in path length of a cuvette or thickness of the colored solution. Combining these two law that is A directly proportion to C into L that is A is equal to K into C into L. A T equal to K into C T into L. A is equal to K into C S into L. Let A T equal to absorbance of a test solution. C T equal to concentration of test solution. A S equal to absorbance of a standard solution. C S equal to concentration of standard solution. So calculating the equation A T by A S, substituting the above equations, we get A T by A S equal to K into C T into L divided by K into C S into L. So A T by A S equal to C T by C S. So C T equal to A T divided by A S into C S. Instrumentation First one light source. The light source is usually a tungsten lamp for a wavelength in a visible range 320 to 700 nanometer and a deuterium or a hydrogen lamp for a ultraviolet light that is below 350 nanometer. Second one is monochromatis or filters. This is means of a selecting a sufficiently narrow wave band. Filter will absorb the light of unwanted wavelength and allow only monochromatic light to pass through. Filters are mainly divided into two. Absorption filters for example glass filter, gelatin filter and second one is interference filter. Third one is photosensitive detectors. Detectors are a transducers which convert the light energy into electrical energy. A detector should be possessed following characteristics. First one should be sensitive. Second one should have a linear response. Third one its noise level should be low. Fourth one should have a short response time. And fifth one should stable. Fourth one is readout devices. The detector responses can be measured by any of the following devices. First one galvanometer, second one ammeter, third one recorder, fourth one digital readout. The signal may be transmitted to computer or a print out devices. Fifth one is sample holder or a cuvette. Cuvettes are a rectangular cell, square cell or a circular one. Made up of a optical glass for a visible wavelength. And capacity may be 3 ml or 2 ml or a 1 ml depending upon the thickness of the wall of the cuvette. Application First one, it is used in a laboratories and hospital to estimate the biochemical sample such as urine, CSF, plasma, serum. Second one is, it is used in the manufacturing of paint. Third one, it is used in a textile and food industry. Fourth one, it is used in a quantitative analysis of a protein, glucose and other biochemical compounds. Fifth one is, it is used to test the water quality. Sixth one, it is used to determine the concentration of hemoglobin in the blood. Next move on to the flame photometry. 
Flame photometry is a branch of spectroscopy in which the species examined in a spectrometer are in the form of atoms. A photoelectric flame photometer is an instrument used in an inorganic chemical analysis to determine the concentration of certain metal ion among the sodium, potassium, calcium and lithium. Theory the basis of a flame photometric working is that the species of alkali metals and alkaline earth metals are dissociated due to the thermal energy provided by the flame source. Due to this thermal excitation, some of the atoms are excited to a higher energy level where they are not stable. The absorbance of a light due to the electron excitation can be measured by using direct absorption technique. The subsequent loss of a energy will result in movement of a excited atom to low energy ground state with emission of some radiations, which can be visualized in a visible region of spectrum. The absorbance of a light due to the electron excitation can be measured by using direct absorption technique while the emitting radiation intensity is measured by using emission technique. The wavelength of a emitted light is specific for a specific elements. Instrumentation First one sources of flame A burner that provides the flame and can be maintained in a constant form and at a constant temperature. Second one is nebulizer and mixing chamber. It helps to transport the homogeneous solution of the substance into the flame at a steady rate. Third one is optical system or a optical filter. The optical system comprises three parts. First one convex mirror, second one lens and third one filter. The convex mirror helps to transmit the light emit from the atom and focus the emission to the lens. The convex lens helps to focus the light on a point called slit. The reflection from the mirror passes through the slit and reaches the filters. This will be isolated the wavelength to be measured from that of a any other extragenous emission. Hence it is act as a interference type colored filter. Fourth one is photo detector. It detects the emit light and measures the intensity of a radiation emitted by the flame. That is, emitted radiation is converted into an electrical signal with the help of a photo detector. Application First one flame photometer has a both quantitative and qualitative application. The flame photometer with a monochromatus emit radiation of a characteristic wavelength which help to detect the presence of particular metal in the sample. Third one is to estimate the sodium, potassium, calcium, lithium etc. in level in a sample of serum, urine, CSF and other body fluids. Fourth one sodium and potassium ion in a muscles and heart can determined by the diluting the blood serum and aspiration into the flame. Next move on to the atomic absorption spectroscopy. It is very common technique for detecting metal and metalloids in a sample. It is very reliable and simple to use. It can be analyzed over 62 elements. It also measures the concentration of metal in a sample. Theory the technique uses the basically the principle that free atom that is gases generated in an atomizer can absorb the radiation at a specific frequency. Atomic absorption spectroscopy quantifies the absorption of a ground state atoms in a gaseous state. The atom absorb ultraviolet or a visible light and make the transition to higher electronic energy level. The analyte concentration is determined from the amount of absorption. Instrumentation First one light source. Hollow cathode lamp are the most common radiation sources in a AAS. It containing a tungsten anode and a hollow cylindrical cathode made of element to determine. These are sealed in a glass tube filled with the inert gases. Each element has its own unique lamp which must be used for that analysis. Second one is atomizer. Elements to be analyzed need to be in an atomic state. Atomization is a separation of a particle into an individual molecule and breaking the molecule into a atoms. This is done by exposing the analyte to a high temperature in a flame or a graphite furnace. Third one is nebulizer. Suck up a liquid sample at a controlled rate. Create a fine aerosol spray for introduction to a flame. Mix the aerosol and fuel and oxidant thoroughly for a introduction to a flame. Fourth one is detector. A light selected by the monochromator is directed onto a detector that is typically a photomultiplier tube whose function is to convert the light signal into an electrical signal proportional to the light intensity. The processing of an electrical signal is fulfilled by the a signal amplifier. The signal could be displayed for a readout or further fit into a data station for a printout by the requested format. 
Fifth one is monochromator. This is very important part in a AAS. It is used to separate the out of all the thousands of line. A monochromator is used to select the specific wavelength of a light which is absorbed by the sample and to exclude the other wavelength. The selection of this specific light allows the determination of a selected element in the presence of others. Application Determination of a even small amount of a metal that is lead, mercury, calcium, magnesium, etc. as follows. First one environmental studies, drinking water, ocean water, soil. Second one food industry and third one pharmaceutical industry. These are regarding calorimetry, flame photometry and atomic absorption spectroscopy. I hope you are clear with this topic. Thank you. Wow, that's impressive. You have completed a magic today. For more videos, subscribe. Join our Facebook group and Instagram page for group discussion and live magazine videos for exam preparation in an hour. We start a class like community for students to learn from a friend in a simple way and support them in their own languages. If you are willing to be that one friend who saves us at the exam night preparation, then please join us by visiting classfly.n.